the craziest things we have done to save money or pay off debt hey guys welcome back passing money plan my name is alex that's kirby um now i fortunately have never had astronomical debt or anything like that um kirby i know you've been up there in the numbers but yeah. as far as i can't think of a story of crazy things i've done to save but i know one that i've done to invest but i'll i'll hand it off to you let's say that's the same thing that's the same thing we, we use that one we use that uh but uh to save um i mean the thing is it's not what i consider crazy it's what the rest of the world consider crazy the rest of the world thinks crazy like uh well i've always told y'all about to save money on the energy bills you know, we had screwed the light bulbs because, you know, like, instead of the band to have like three or four light bulbs, we screw all the one <laughs> and uh, in, the, in the entire house. And in the house that we had at the time, it was over 100 bulbs in the house. And then we got it all. Yeah, because it, yeah, it was like it was silver pants and black everywhere. So it was like over 100 bulbs in the house. And then so we got that down to about 15 bulbs total for the whole house. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, and so yeah, so that was that was one of the things we did. But I got a lot more. But go ahead, what you got? Um, yeah, I mean, for that's a good point. A lot of people, I think, uh, other than us, would think it's crazy. Um, but before I get to like the big one, I mean, I we've done basic stuff. Like my wife has basically gone without getting her nails done or her hair. Um. So that we could save more money. Um, or I mean, me, it's like it's easy because I just don't go out, <laughs> just stay home. But uh, so like going out to eat and stuff isn't very common for me, I guess. But so that saves money. That would be like the biggest expense for me as far as because I don't really I barely even buy clothes. I just I don't know, I, everything that comes in, I just save it and stuff. But the biggest thing that I did was um, invest my entire savings in the stock market. And that was uh, from your advice. No, <laughs> no it wasn't your advice. <laughs> no, it was inspired by you. But uh, yeah, that was the biggest thing that we did was invest everything that we had saved. And uh, it took us about a year, I think, to save that. So going from saving it where it's secured in a bank to you know investing it in the stock market uh to learn on that journey was a big jump for us yeah that's a big jump for you. but i mean well yeah people might think it's crazy people might think it's crazy um, yeah people might think it's crazy uh one thing i did oh and actually my wife still do it to this day uh again the same on utilities it was well at the time we was using it to save money because the bills were so high and we made so little. Uh, like me, I, I was making like nine dollars an hour. Uh, so my uh, on the and I never knew this until well, I mean I never knew it had this feature on the thermostat, but my wife locked the thermostat so it wouldn't go below a certain temperature. And then, you know how in Texas it gets super hot, uh, but we could never. We can, I could never, and I didn't know. I just thought the thermostat just didn't go that low, but my wife put a lock on there so it couldn't go down. So she, it couldn't go down. So it was either, it, but the thing was, our like, your utility bill, electric bill went from $380 a month down to $89 a month. So in combination with the lights and the combination with the lights and the thermostat and things like that, the, we saved about two $200 or some change uh, per month. So that's two thousand dollars saved right there in a year just by okay. doing those certain things. Especially if you need money, you know that's that was and at the time we needed money. It was, we wanted money. We needed. We weren't trying to you know do this to save. We was trying to get the bills low enough so we can even afford the bills. And that was that was like something along the journey of I didn't understand what you know escrow was. You know everybody always say thirty year fix, thirty year fix. You gonna pay the same price for thirty years, yeah, on principal and interest. But when escrow shoots up, and 
take you out of whack. And then, of course, I'm only making nine dollars an hour. My wife wasn't that high rate. I mean, you know, she was just a, a I think E three E four at the time, so wasn't making no money either. So we just struggling to survive. Uh, I mean, a lot of things like that, that all seems normal to me to do. But yeah, I think it would be crazy for other people. I mean, we've, uh, I mean, we keep our AC at a set level. We don't lower it or anything. I don't know what you guys keep it at. We keep it at like 76, but. Um, uh, we keep it at 75, 74. My wife won't let it go below 74. It's, yeah. It's no, not. I, I mean, a lot of people have told me that like what we keep it at is extremely hot that they keep their house like right. 68 I'm like i i don't know I'm... yeah hey well hey well. go take off some clothes or something <laughs> <laughs> yeah. i mean like and then yeah. where you're at your uh your utility cost is way higher like so a monthly yeah. how much is your utility for just electricity what is that a normal month like for, just for a normal person not for you for just electricity is i think Roughly 120, 120, 130 bucks. Not for a normal person, not you. Oh, for a normal person? Yeah. In your area. What's what's and I was talking to someone that paid like 60 bucks or something or 80 bucks for one person. For, I mean for a house, not if they're in an apartment, that's different. But if they're in a house, that's what they pay. Yeah, I mean, because in with Lakeland at least. Lakeland Electric, they provide electricity and water in the same bill. So, like, the average bill here is probably about 200, 300 bucks. So, and then how much, how much is it for you? Uh, for me, the highest that we've seen is like 280, but it's roughly on average about 200, 220 for both. Yeah, combined. No, in my area, normally people pay the normal is about two. That's like the normal. Me, I'm still at like eighty nine bucks. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. But is that eighty nine for both or for? No, no, no. My water, my water comes out to like thirty, forty bucks a month. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, maybe it may get up to like fifty, but one time, because you know, I got the underground sprinkler system. Yeah. And then I, I, you know, I thought I moved up Beverly Hills, baby. You get an underground water sprinkler system. You the man. <laughs> I never had one, so yeah. as soon as I first moved here, I had it coming on like three days a week, <laughs> coming in the morning and night. I got that bill; it was like one fifty five for water. That thing ain't been on in eight years. <laughs> we uh, I unplugged it. I ain't I ain't trimmed down on the usage. I yeah. unplugged it all together. I think our bill was two eighty because of the sprinklers, and I just I literally shut off like the whole valve, like I just turn off the whole sprinkler system and uh, I dropped it like 60 bucks a month. <laughs> but um, yeah, I, I, so like, I seen the bill. The first thing I did, I just went out to the garage and it's it's plugged into a power system. So I unplugged the power and then came on it. And it's and that was what eight nine eight nine years ago. Yeah. Do they charge you for yeah. uh storm water? Uh, I don't look at the bill that in depth. I just look at the number. <laughs> yeah. So like uh I was looking at the bill and they charge for storm water. I don't know exactly what it is. If someone's watching this, you could correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it's like just when it rains, the water that goes into the sewage or whatever underneath the street, but they'll charge you for that. You know how much it rains here? Like, it's like, I can't help the weather. <laughs> like, so like, you can't even change it. Yeah. And then the, th the crazy part, if let's say, let's say you was, uh, like that guy on the cheapest man on earth video, if you did something like collecting the water, like had a, a barrel or something collecting the water outside your house, then that's illegal to collect the rainwater. Oh my gosh. It's, it's crazy. The, the stormwater thing, I'm, I'm not for sure. We probably, and uh, here we probably get charged for it, but I don't look at the bill. I just look at the numbers. And then if the number is outrageous, that's when I deep dive into the bill. Like, like again, for a sprinkler system, I looked at the bill. It was a, a big jump from one month to the next. Then I looked at the bill then, and then I haven't really looked at the bill since then. After it went down, it was like, all right, cool. Uh, I don't know, y'all. Do you have gas at your at your place? You all electric. Yeah, we have gas. We have gas here, so it's electric gas. Our gas bill is like you know twenty thirty bucks. It's nothing. 
uh, outrageous. And I have gas stove, dryer is gas, and then our heat is gas also. The mm. hot water tank is gas also. Um, so, but besides that, I don't have no that much anomalies when it come there. But soon, soon some gum out of whack. That's when I deep dive into it. Like my insurance bill going up, you know, one hundred and thirty some percent. And then I was like, oh, what the heck happened? And I'm still looking for you know an alternative for that. Um, and it was something very interesting. Uh, I was at a, a board meeting, I say last week, and and it was a another investor guy that invested in real estate. He's not from the United States, but he lives here now. And then he was, I was asking him, I was like, I was like, did you see how much the insurance costs or how much the insurance cost has risen, you know, year over year? And then he was like, no, I haven't seen it. And then I, he was like, oh, he was like, I refuse to pay for insurance. And then so the next question was, I was like, so you pay for the property's cash, right? And he was like, yeah. He was like, but if you do the cost analysis on it, he was like, as much as they charge you and then how much they're going to charge you if you use it? You're like, I'd just rather have the money sent to the side to pay for whatever repairs are needed. And he don't use insurance at all. I said, very interesting, very interesting. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, if it gets too egregious, that might be something that I implement uh, or, you know, that pay is, for properties. That's interesting because, um, like, it, I do the same thing. And I, we've talked about this in another video, but with uh, when I sell products online i don't use insurance from the post office because it's the same thing like it's it's an ex an extreme hassle for them to even get you to pay insurance like so when you pay for the insurance it's not even covered because they'll they basically just deny the insurance claim so i just started covering the, the packages myself but that's interesting right yeah. I mean, I, uh, that one took me for a loop because that's the first time I heard somebody say it. I mean, with the, you know, the condos and stuff like that, it makes sense. I mean, well, for him, it makes sense for the condos, but he said, oh, none of his properties, but, and he's paying for all his properties in cash, but he said, no, I don't use insurance at all. At all. And then he said, uh, another one he pointed out was in Florida, you know, how, you know, if the roof is getting older, the insurance company automatically make you uh, repay, uh, you know, buy another roof or whatever. And um, and he said, it's a thing out there called uh, 50 year shingles. And he was like, it costs a little bit more, but they don't tell you about it. They don't tell you about it. And then the insurance companies don't want to bring it up either because they want people to renew their roof, especially after the debacle, of, you know, back there in 2012, 13, where everybody was getting, you know, saying they had roof damage. Uh, so now insurance companies are, are being a big sticker on it because, you know, it cost them a lot of money. And that's why a lot of insurance companies in Florida is going bankrupt. Uh, but other things that we did, I know we're getting off track a little bit here on that. But, um, but uh, other things that we we I've done to, uh, I don't know, that's not what I was going to say. The next thing I was going to say was, I was going to ask you, so when you and your wife was coming up uh, before you bought the house and stuff like that, you know, what was your budget like? And then when it was time to come up with the funds for the house and stuff like that, before you got to that mode, what was what was your savings like? Was it uh we're saving 30% of whatever we made, 20% of whatever we made? What was the dynamics there? Yeah. Um so we during that time, um our finances were still separate um because we weren't married yet we hadn't even moved in yet but i had already had the down payment but a lot of uh the money that i was making was either going into savings or i was buying um at the time i think i was buying like gold or, or yeah gold and silver and then i was also selling it um so i had money going into that and money going into like inventory because this was like before I learned uh the stock market um so right. whether I had money in physical cash like in the bank or in things that I could liquidate like quickly like that I was actively buying and selling um so once now once we did put the down payment on the house it was like a shock to me because like I thought I like lost the money like oh gosh like 
it, like it was to me <laughs> to me it was like buying <laughs> It was like buying like a car or something. I didn't realize houses, I guess, go up in value or whatever. But um, yeah, it just felt like I just like lost my money and just put into this house. But um, we, by then we, uh, by, by the time we had gotten the house, our finances were combined and um, we actually act like quickly saved. I think we went from like a couple grand up to like seven grand in like a matter of a month or two or so. So it was, it was, you know, we were very hard on saving at that point, but then it was the end of that year when we all got together and we were talking and then we just took that same money and put in the stock market. So that was, uh, mm -hmm. that was like, to me, that's my biggest, uh, biggest risk you it, took. Up. To me, it was like, <laughs> It was like, that was just, I was willing to do it. But when I tell other people that story, they look at me like I'm insane. Like, um, and I, I didn't think it was that crazy of a deal. I thought it was just like me that willing, you know, being willing to do something. Um, but people right. are very attached to their savings um, and don't want to take risk with it, I guess. I mean, most people are risk averse. Most people are risk averse. Uh, well, what? That's one thing. Most people are risk averse, and most people don't want to make sacrifices. That's that's true. The underlying thing is it's always going to be something you have to do. And, and you know, my motto is: you rather make the sacrifice, make the cuts, make the uh, you know, do stuff like when you're saying that you unplug the the sprinkler system to cut the cost, cut the cost, cut the cost. You know. I'm very big on cut costs, but my motto is always you rather cut the cost when you can afford it than the world making you cut the cost because you can't afford it. Because when they when the world makes you cut the cost, it's going to hurt a whole lot more. Right. So so in, in our situation, we was almost at the brink of them just, you know, the world making us cut the cost. And we just started cutting, we start deep cutting, you know, oh, screw light bulbs, everything, you know, ramen noodle sandwiches, we didn't care. <laughs> Whatever it was to get the cost down, that's that's what we did. And then that's how we was able to survive longer and not miss payments and stuff like that. But we was almost on the brink of, okay, the world's about to make you do it. And, but it's so much easier when you can afford it. Like now, when I say my wife, she still don't let the, you know, thermostat go below 74 and we in Florida is hot, whatever. But to, I mean, now I'm so used to it, even though I can afford it to go down to 65, you know, 60 and all that stuff, just cause I can afford it. I don't mean I'm about to spend it. Right. And uh, to a lot of people, to a lot of people, it's, huh, you, you can afford it, but you'd rather be hot. No, it's why would I waste money on stuff that don't matter? I mean, it's, I'm, I was born and raised in Detroit. Central air, that wasn't even a, a thing. You know what I mean? You know, only thing you had was heat. You got some fans or something, but if you was hot, you go outside. You, you know, you take off your clothes, go get in the shower, go do something else. I mean, I've been in some very crazy places with no, and it's hundreds of degrees with no AC. So it's not a, it's not a, a big deal, but for most people, they're like, oh no, you're crazy. I mean, everywhere I go and I see people, that's the first thing I do. I meet people house, I look at the thermostat. Like, what the hell? Like, like what? Is that is <laughs> rich? Yeah, people, I was like, man. oh no, I uh, no. Yeah, when I see people have like yeah, the was... AC on sixty, I'm like, man, y'all got a lot of money. Like, they <laughs> yeah, not rich. It's yeah, that's that's insane. Yeah, it's it's a that's like for me another thing, and I mean for I mean I was told that this is a thing I didn't know, but uh, me I would always. So for my truck, for my truck, uh, I would only change a tire when one went bad. But I didn't, I didn't try to match it to the other tires that was there. So for years, so for years, I had four tires on my car, and it was all made by a different manufacturer. I had one good year, one Firestone. That's what one... I do. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So yeah, I was, I was, and then some lady told me. Uh, she was like, oh, you'll never be part of the boys club. And I was like, what you talking about? And she said, 
many times back. Oh, well, I was like, I guess I won't be part of the club because I only, I only replaced what I had to. And then, uh, and then finally, I think maybe two years ago, all of them was going bad at the same time. And I changed all four of them at once, but I got a super discount. I pulled out military discounts. I pulled every discount I could. I waited for those on sale and yada, yada, yada. I think for all four tires, I paid like eight seventy five, And usually it costs around about 1300 and but yeah, that's that's some you know crazy stuff. I mean, I know you you put a you put a uh, <laughs> I'll let you tell it you put up on yeah. your side from here. I remember when uh when you when you had to pay that, I think that was a couple years ago, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Chris was telling me he's like, Man, Kirby's pissed he had to spend <laughs> on his truck. But um yeah, I did the man. same thing though. Like I just only changed one tire. I, I still do it. Like if only one chat only one tire, like at a time, like whichever one I need to fix or replace. Or like ones that have nails, I'll just plug it. Like I don't even change the tire. Like I'll let it run bald. <laughs> let it ride, let it ride. Yeah. I mean I'll change it and I won't I, the thing I don't do, I don't go get a used tire. I don't do that. But I'm going to get a new, the cheapest new tire you I, you can find. I'm not, I, I go in there and I'm like, I need a tire that fits this car. And they be like, okay, do you want one like this? I'm like, no, the cheapest one you have. The cheapest one you have. I don't care who, what name's on it. And they all look at me crazy. And then, so yeah, I was riding around th four different kind of threads on there. Yeah, I, I didn't care. I, point A to B for me, point A to B. I didn't. I remember so okay on my older car the one I I drove that thing until like I wouldn't drive anymore I mean it still drove but like the motor was all yeah, it was it sucked but uh my clumsiness I got too close to like a keypad entry thing one time and the the wall the keypad was on was like this like little podium thing that was uh like brick. And I just scraped my car like, <laughs> like, like so closely. I just scraped it along the whole side, and I was like, "Oh my gosh!" And like, it dented it in. It like it r ripped off the paint, and so like, you know, I didn't know what to do. So I took it to like a body shop, and they're like, "Yeah, it's gonna be like, it was like five hundred dollars or something to like fix it." I was like, "Nah, it's all good." <laughs> so I got some like two dollar paint from car, and I just I just like like painted over it, and it was like it wasn't even matching. And people were like, "Whoa, you got a decal!" Like, no, dude, that's just me painting. Over. And I'd be like, "Yeah, I got a new decal, man." Yep. Yeah. I, I paid the big bucks for this one. <laughs> yeah, it's just it was like some cheap paint just fixed it. Boom, that's it. Yeah, you used to have that mirror in your uh, when you knocked off the mirror. Yeah, back then my brother knocked the mirror off, so I bought one off Amazon. I was able to put it, put a new one off, but it was black instead of gray. So I was like, I don't care. <laughs> like, right. Yeah. Oh man. Well, that like being said, uh, thanks everybody for watching the channel. Um, comment in the comment section if it's some cheap or crazy things that you did. You know, just save money or just being crazy like us. Uh, <laughs> With all that being said, we'll see you in the next video. Uh, see you next time. Have a good one. Have a good one, guys.